Hey everyone, I'm really excited to be working with Movie Palette for this video and as a treat, Movie Palette sent over one palette of my choice to show you guys it is in the wrapping. It's so beautiful, isn't it? It's really, really pretty. So many colors. I chose this one especially. It's the Secret Life of Walter Mini because it had so many awesome colors on it. Okay, so let's take the plastic off and let's see what this thing's all about. Oh yeah, look at this bad boy. By the way, you might be confused. What even is Movie Palette? Movie Palette is created by a team of artists who choose dominant colors from your favorite movies and put them onto a palette, you know? That's why it's called Movie Palette. So every single strip of color on this canvas is a scene from The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. And what's really fun about that is it kind of is like a guessing game, like what color is which scene? Because sometimes the color that you think would represent a scene isn't actually the most dominant color. The first thing that immediately sticks out to me about Movie Palette is that like the texture of it is really, really cool. It, it looks almost as if someone threaded these colors together and it doesn't feel cheap. And so it feels like it's going to last. This feels like it's not going to just break on my wall tonight. You know what? It probably even looks great on my wall. Yeah, I was right. It looks great on my wall. So seriously, if you guys want something that is durable, is beautiful, and it represents your favorite movie or one of your favorite movies in just an extremely cool way that will get people talking, your friends, your parents, your brothers, your dog, it'll get them all talking about what is this. And you can even play games like what scene is this? What scene is this? If you guys want something like that, then head over to Movie Palette. And if you use the code in the description, you can say 15% on your purchase. That's not 5%, that's not 10%, that is 15% for one of these. That it, These things are worth it guys, let me tell you. So yeah, head over to Movie Palette and get your palette today. Thank you so much and let's get back to the video. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. And today we are checking out Star Trek for The Voyage Home. I'm really excited for this one. I have really liked every single Star Trek movie that I've seen before. I guess I've only seen the three old ones and then the J.J. Abrams ones, but out of the old ones that I've seen, I've really enjoyed every single one of them for their own kind of individual thing. The first one because it was so slow and just magnificent and beautiful. The second one because of Khan and just the story in general. It was a great sci-fi movie, not even a Star Trek movie movie but a sci-fi movie and the third one I thought had some great moments as well and some sad moments the Enterprise is gone they better get that stinking Enterprise back because what a ship what a beautiful sexy ship that is and if it's not back in this movie I'm gonna be very sad also Spock is alive again I can see that Leonard Nimoy is directing this movie thank you Amazon Prime for telling me that before I watched the movie but I can see that he's directing it again I thought he did a decent job directing the third one although I thought it was a little bit more than compared to the first and second movie. However, I'm excited that Spock is back, although this is kind of a different Spock. I know he has the same memories and stuff, but I think in this movie, he's going to be almost relearning all of these memories and I think the voyage home maybe could entail that they're coming back to Earth from Vulcan because we finished the last movie on Vulcan and maybe something happens along the way but I feel like this movie is going to be a lot about Spock kind of rediscovering himself, rediscovering who he is. That's kind of what I hope for and then of course I hope the Enterprise is back like I said earlier. And before we get into this reaction let me do the lighting so let me turn on the light and we decide what color it should be. Boop! Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the color today, I'm gonna go like a blue. I'm just gonna go like a blue because Star Trek, we're in space. I don't know, I don't really know what colors are gonna be associated with this movie. And I don't know, blue's a very relaxing color. And I feel like the voyage home entails like a, a relaxing movie. It would be really funny if this movie is incredibly stressful because then my color is completely off. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon with uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube as well as early accents reactions to my movies that come out one week early. Thank you so much if you check it out. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, let's get into some more Star Trek. I'm really enjoying the franchise so far. I'm really enjoying the franchise so far and I have heard really good things about Star Trek 4. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy my reaction to Star Trek 4 The Voyage Home. Oh, I thought this was a Star Trek thing, but this is the Challenger space. This is the one that blew up, right? Like the actual space. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go! The theme song! A Leonard Nimoy film! Let's go! The Star Trek theme song gets me so hyped! 
Star Trek for the voyage home. Ah, oh, we're getting some Klingons in this movie. Klingon ambassador. Okay, I like the Klingons. Apparent trajectory to the Terran solar system. Attempts to communicate with the probe have been negative on all known frequencies. Destroy it. That is a Klingon. Six, five, four. Oh, this is from the Enterprise. No, no, where was the camera? How are they watching all of this? Was there just a random camera in space? Oh, I don't want to watch the death of my beloved ship. Of our beloved ship. Sorry to exclude you guys. We're secretly developing the Genesis torpedo conceived by Kirk's son and test detonated by the Admiral himself. Oh, this guy's twisting everything around a little bit. <laughs> Genesis was perfectly named. Creation of life. What's this guy? What's his name? Serac? We have the right to preserve our race. You have the right to commit murder? <laughs> Silence! Silence! Both of them are arguing, but both of them, both sides that they are arguing about have done kind of the same things. Remember this well. There shall be no peace as long as Kirk lives. Oh, okay, okay. We have to be court martial and spend the rest of our lives mining borite, but to have to go home in this Klingon fleet trap. It's kind of a cool looking ship. That's Spock. That's Spock looking like a messiah. Mikael's using reason as our guide. Chief Planahath, matron of Vulcan philosophy. Correct. What is the molecular formula of your name stuff like? Why is it saying everything so fast? What was Kirikim Thaw's first law of metaphysics? Nothing unreal exists. Correct. Adjust the sine wave of this magnetic envelope so that anti- I never want to be a Vulcan. This is all too much work for me. Chronic configuration of gadolinium. Correct. How do you feel? No, oh, you can't. No, you can't answer that one. <laughs> that one is <laughs> caught him off guard. That the good of the one, you, was more important to them. Yeah. Yeah, they, you, they sacrificed a lot to save you, Spock. I want to know what this tube is. Here he comes now. Whoa, what the heck? That's a weird tube. Is it like a planet? No, it's not a planet. Why would I even think that? Emergency thrusters. No response, Captain. What the heck is Emergency this? This is so cool. I love the pulsing music in the background. Come in. Yeah, they know they're dead. Look at these Dutch angles. Something bad's about to happen. And then they deserve it. Look at the ship there, and it's so ugly. It's using forms All of energy our best true. scientists do not understand. Given Can you protect us? We're launching everything we have. That might not be enough. That this will, if successful, generate power to keep us alive. What is that thing? It's like a, it's like a moon that has been turned into a cylinder. Everybody not going to Earth had better get off. Savick. This is goodbye. No, I like Savick. No, 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 keep her. He saved Spock. He saved us all. I thought you should know. Oh, that's so nice of her to say. May your journey be free of incident. Live long and prosper, Lieutenant. Live long and prosper. Spock. Jim. Don't you remember? It would not be proper to refer to you as Jim. No, come on, Spock. Back in his post like nothing happened. I don't know if you've got the whole picture or not, but he's not exactly working on all the thrusters. No, yeah, he's got like one out of four thrusters on right now, and it's a weak thruster at that. Thrusters functional? Whoa, it's a pretty shot. That is cool. Oh, it's at the space station thing. What is this menace of a ship? Oh my god. What's it doing? Is it making clouds? Check up and assign a Federation escort. No, sir. And no Federation vessels on the assigned patrol stations. Interesting. 
They must know something's up, yeah. Head, not mine. What I mean is, I may have carried your soul, but I sure couldn't fill your shoes. Aww, bones. Could you tell me what it felt like? It would be impossible to discuss the subject without a common frame of reference. You're joking. Yeah, come on, Spock. Come on, Spock. Making like a giant water wall and then just a whole whack of clouds. Seen rapidly. What is the estimate cloud cover of the planet at this time? 78.6%. Notify all. 78% of the world is covered in cloud. It is difficult to answer when one does not understand the question. Mm, 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 mm. Perhaps you should transmit a planetary distress signal. Like when Spock for the how do I feel, how do you feel question? Ooh, interesting. The tie-in. All Earth orbiting starships are powerless. The probe is vaporizing our oceans. Vaporizing the oceans. That's what it's doing. Avoid the planet Earth at all costs. Farewell. Looks like we're going to planet Earth. You let us hear the probe's transmission. Yes, sir. On speakers. That sounds so cool. That its transmissions are destructive. I find it illogical that its intention should be hostile. Interesting. It's a friendly spaceship. It must be meant for man. You're suggesting the transmission is meant for a life form other than man. For fish. That's why they're ionizing the ocean. Evaporating the ocean. And this is what it would sound like underwater. It sounds like a whale. Was I right with the fish thing, except it's whales? It's whale people. Fly years to talk to a whale. It's possible. What if they're whale people? Whales That's what I'm saying. Far earlier than man. What if whales are aliens? And humpbacks were heavily hunted by man. They've been extinct since the 21st century. No, no, don't say that. There must be an alternative. There is one possibility, but of course I cannot guarantee success. It's okay, we take it. Except on Earth of the past. Yes, Dodger. That is exactly what I said. The past? Are we doing some time travel? Hey, just a damn Spock, minute. start your computations for time warp. There's time warp? Is this an actual thing in Star Trek, time warp, or do they make it up for this movie? Also, let's do the time warp again. Anyone know that song? That movie, anyone? Take a swim? Off to the deep end, Mr. Scott. We gotta find some humpbacks. Humpbacked? They're gonna put the humpback whales in this in the ship. Around the sun, pick up enough speed, you're in time warp. If you don't, you're fried. Would you prefer to do nothing? I prefer a dose of common sense. Okay, so they've done it before, so that's that's good to know that they've done it before. Get him back! Get him back! No! Oh, what the heck? The clouds are too strong. So you can time travel in any ship, as long as you go fast enough then, hey? Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Hamlet, act one, scene four. <laughs> I'm, I believe him now. I believe him now. Shields, Mr. Chekhov. Shields, aye. May fortune favor the foolish. Ah, oh, let's go! Slings out around the sun. Warp six. Warp seven. Warp eight. Oh, this is so intense. Warp nine. Oh no, oh no. Whoa, that was cool. And they're time traveling. What the heck am I watching right now? This is so surreal. When? Yeah, I wonder if they say the exact day. ...by the pollution content of the atmosphere. I believe we have arrived at the latter half of the 20th century. Oh, like the, the 90s? Admiral, this is strange. The song is directly ahead. It's coming from San Francisco. The song is in San Francisco? Like in the aquarium or something? These photons could then be injected into the dilithium chamber causing crystalline restructure. Okay, Spock. Okay, Spock. You're too smart for this world. I want you all to be very careful. This is terra incognita. Many of their customs will doubtless take us by surprise. 
I'm so excited. I am so excited for this. I never expected Star Trek crew to be in like our time span. It's a foregone conclusion. None of these people have ever seen an extraterrestrial before. It's okay. He'll just look like he's cosplaying or something. Was that was that was that big at the time? There you go. Perfect. You look like you look like a judo master or something like that, a karate king. <laughs> I bet these guys weren't expecting this tonight. Oh my god, imagine seeing this. You would go crazy. Especially telling it to people, like, oh. What if people who say they see aliens have actually seen aliens like this? We just don't believe them. Everybody remember where we parked. He's like a dad on like a family road trip <laughs> when you stop at the water park or something. Well, I'm double dumbass on you! This is funny, it's like a fish out of water scenario, except the technology isn't new. The technology is like two centuries old. Break up. You look like a cadet review. Yeah, those outfits, people are gonna make fun of you for those outfits. How much would you give me for them? Excuse me. Weren't those a birthday present from Dr. McCoy? And they will be again, that's the beauty of it. Oh wait, that's genius. One hundred dollars. Is that a lot? Yeah, I guess because inflation and stuff, I bet $100 is like one cent now. Simple logic will suffice. I believe I shall begin by making use of this map. Spock's a genius. How do you know this? Simple logic. <laughs> Spock's gonna be so impressed. I never thought I would need this. I never thought I would need our Star Trek crew to be walking in the 20th century, but I love this. Can you direct me to the naval base in Alameda? It's where they keep the nuclear vessels. <laughs> Why? We're, we're looking for nuke. Hello, we are looking for the nuclear vessels in Alameda. Could you tell me where? <laughs> oh my god. I think it's across the bay in Alameda. That's what I said, Alameda. Alameda. I know but that. But where is Alameda? It's across the bay. Oh my god, Spock's about to fight him. And he went there. <laughs> Dumbass on you, and so forth. You mean the profanity? Yeah. That's simply the way they talk here. <laughs> Nobody pays any attention. The movie's like dissing us. ...in the world exclusively devoted to whales. As you can see, we have a great deal to offer. But that is small. But they have a whale of a lot to offer. They're not. They're mammals, just like you Why would you me. think a whale is a fish? It is so ...needing big. air to breathe. And producing milk to nurse except killer whales are actually dolphins so the museum has gotten this wrong variety of purposes most of which can be achieved synthetically at this point 100 years ago using that's so sad oh that's so sad whoever said the human race was logical yeah now if you'll follow me please I'll introduce she's like what a strange outfit you have And when I was in Iceland, I got to see a sperm whale like out in the wild. It came up for some air and then its tail, boom, arced and slammed down and we were pretty close to it on the tour boat and it was so majestic. Well, for one thing, we, we simply don't have enough money to keep feeding them two tons of shrimp per day. <laughs> Shrimp's expensive. 30 minutes and then start again. In the ocean, the other whales will pick up the song and pass it on. Why is there just a random nun here though? Why is there always a random nun in a crowd? Could they be part of the mating ritual? Spock, what are you doing? Or is it pure communication? I guess he's uh, trying to feel what the whale's saying, right? Admiral, if we were to assume that these whales are ours to do with as we please, we would be as guilty as those who caused their extinction. Ooh. But they are not the hell your whales. I, I suppose they've told you that, huh? Yeah, they, they did. They did. <laughs> his vocab, his vocabulary. It's colorful metaphors that we've discussed. I don't think you should try using them anymore. Yeah, yeah, you just weren't using them right. You cannot tell a lie. I don't mean lie. But you could exaggerate. Yeah, bend the truth a little bit, you know? Can't you remember? The hell I can't. <laughs> hey, he used it right there. Talking about human beings here. It's never been proven their intelligence is oh, in any way. Oh, come on, Bob. 
Yeah, Bob, why are you saying this? Someone is not limited to my estimate of their intelligence. Fair enough, yeah, or else you would never you would never be compassionate to someone who isn't a doctor or something, you know? Well done, Team 2. And Admiral, it is the Enterprise. What? Oh, like the boat is called the Enterprise, maybe? You guys again, she's gonna start fighting them in the in the parking lot. Berkeley. I think you did a little too much LDS. LDS? Mm. LSD. Hard luck cases, that's why I work with whales. We don't want to be in any trouble. You've already been that. Come on. Ooh, she's so nice though, what the heck? I'd have driven by them and go burp burp, honked my horn at them and be like, you plebs, you suck. That's what I would have that's what I would have done. What did you mean when you said all that stuff back at the institute about extinction? I meant it. it means they're going extinct. Gracie is pregnant. <laughs> All right, who are you? Interesting. Frankly, you couldn't possibly imagine. Or believe, I'll bet. Very likely. Yeah, pretty likely, I'd say. You guys like Italian? Who doesn't like Italian? Let me tell you. Pizza, pasta, that's it. Sorry to all the Italians out there. Thing about it, I find it hard to believe that I've come millions of miles. Thousands. Millions. Mr. Scott, just take it easy. Dr. Nichols has offered to take us around the plant personally. Oh, that's so nice. Join us? Of course. Don't bury yourself in the... <laughs> I love bones. I flew something similar back in my academy days. All right, and this must be old stuff to you. Old. Yeah, you would you would say so. Manufacture a wall that would do the same job, but be only one inch thick. Oh wow, that's crazy. That's ludicrous. Computer. Computer. Scotty, man. Scotty. Ah. Hello, computer. No, man. No, you're crazy. He's typing so weirdly, but so fast at the same time. Not now, Madeline. See, by changing this simple thing, unless it was invented here in the first place, but they didn't know that they were the ones who invented it in the first place. You know what I mean? Time travel is a very weird thing. You uh, realize, of course, if we give him the formula, we're altering the future. That's what I'm saying. Why? How do we know he didn't invent the thing? That's true. That's what also I said. Oh my god. Sure you won't change your mind? Is there something wrong with the one I have? <laughs> oh my god, whenever he takes things so literally, it's actually really funny. Oh, this is where they parked, right? Cetacean biologist. Just lucky, I guess. Why is nobody eating those breadsticks? I'd be munching on those breadsticks so much. They'd be all gone by now. They'll be flown in a special oh, So there's only four breadsticks in the shots and released there. here. And there's five breadsticks in these shots. Besides, I want to know. He's never had actual beer before. What is that? What's what? The beeping. I thought I told you never to call me. Sorry, Admiral. We just thought you'd like to know. Let me in the middle. She's like, what the heck is this thing? Who are you? Who do you think I am? I'm a man from the future. Don't tell me. You're from outer space. Actually, kind of true. I into this sooner or later. The truth? Oh, I am all ears. Show, show her the ship and it'll all be believed. Repopulate the species. Well, why didn't you just say so? I mean... Yeah, it's easy to believe. And he also changed it from this random alien space probe to repopulating the species. Are we leaving? Come on. We need to go. Not the pizza, don't leave the pizza. You know, I never really realized this, but the inside of like the Enterprise and all the Starfleet stuff it looks like the inside of a boat. Oh, uh, is he actually gonna show her the ship? Who are you? He has told you. It, but don't take too long. 
Aren't you wondering why you're just dropping him off in a random field? I would be so freaked out. I would drive away. I would leave San Francisco. CIC Command Duty Officer Commander Rogerson. Yes, Chief. We're tracking that too. What do you make of it? Got it. They got it. Beam, beam us up, Scotty. Take the collector. You go first. No. What if Chekhov gets caught? I love the effects though, they look so beautiful. Scotty, now would be a good time. Yeah, please, Scotty. Free! Ah, uh, not a great time. Not a great time anymore. You play games with me, mister, and you're through. I am? May I go now? <laughs> we better call Washington. Don't move. Okay. He's gonna pretend that that's a weapon? I warn you, if you don't lie on the floor, I will have to stun you. I don't think that's a phaser, is it? How is no one chasing after him? Beam me up, Scotty! What if he's... He looks injured. That was a long fall. You've got to do better. I'll try, sir, Scott. Wee bit of a snit, didn't he? Yeah, he is. He is. Seen with the press, it wouldn't have been good for them. Besides, we thought it would be easier on you this way. You they left last night. You son of a bitch! Yeah, he deserved that. He deserved that. Bop, 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 bop. Punch him again. That's so annoying. Admiral Kirk! Admiral Kirk! Don't run into the spaceship. Don't knock yourself on the head. <laughs> that would be so trippy. That would be so weird. That would be so scary. Storage tanks for your whales. We'll bring them up the same Admiral, way we brought you up. It's they're gone. Trip. That's not good. Told. They're in Alaska by now. They swam that far that fast. They swam to Alaska from San Francisco in less than 24 hours. What's wrong? I've located Chekhov, sir. They're taking him to emergency surgery right now. No. He's not expected to survive. Jim. Bones, you need to get over there right now. Is that the logical thing to do, Spock? No, it's the emotional thing to, the do. Human thing to do. Ah, uh, let's go, Spock. Well, we're gonna have to look like physicians. Oh my days. Do you have a different view, Doctor? Sounds like a goddamn Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> no, out of the way, get out of the way. What did you say she's got? Cramps. <laughs> I'm gonna have you removed. Doctor, doctor, such unprofessional behavior. He's gonna punch him or something. Or stun him. Can you hear me? He's coming around, Jim. Check off, check off, check off. Pavel. Rank. Admiral. Yeah, let's go. Bones is the hero. Hold it! Hold it! It'd be so fun if you were Chekhov just lying there. I like the music for this chase. Oh, Zooey Mama, that was good. For everything. Scotty, beam me up. Oh! I've beamed up 400 tons before. 400 tons? Well, it's not just the whales, it's the water. Yeah, water is so heavy. Guess, Spock. Your best guess. Guessing is not in my nature, Doctor. It is, it is. No. It's half in your nature. Do that on screen. There they are, look at those beauties. Ah, oh, they're such majestic creatures. Come on, blow up their ship! Are these CGI whales? Because if they are, they look really good.
어... Imagine actually seeing the giant ship. Ten seconds, Admiral. They're gonna be pretty cramped though, these whales, for a little bit, don't you think? Hey, it looks like some work. Mr. Scott cannot give me exact figures, Admiral, so I will make a guess. Yeah, let's go. Admiral, I think you better get up there. We're having a power to fall off. This isn't good, this isn't good. Take breakaway speed! Hardly, Admiral. I cannot even guarantee we'll escape the sun's gravity. Oh, God. Ow! They made it. I like just the zoom into the sun and then the sound effect. That was kind of cool. My God, Jim, where are we? Out of control and blind as a bat. I like it. That's just how I want to be. Let's get the whales out of here before we sink. Bend and ship. Scotty, do you hear me? Scotty! What happened to Scotty? What happened to Scotty? Flashy, get my arms Oh, no. We're going to be all right. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Kirk, 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 Kirk. It'd be really funny if the humpback whale thing doesn't work. <laughs> and they're just like, it's like, no, I wouldn't know. Ooh, that was so epic. Are you okay? That one looks like it's dead. Okay, it's not dead. It's just just decided to stand vertically. So the ship is mimicking this whale right now. It's just off. It's just leaving. Interesting. We'll never know what it wanted. We'll never know why it came. Yeah! We'll just never know what that was, will we? Even the whales know, they're celebrating. Look at them go. The music's so good right now. Bring in the accused. You will not be convicted of any of your crimes because you literally saved the planet. I do not stand accused, Mr. President. I stand with my shipmates. As you wish. I love Spock now, he's back to normal pretty much. Admiral Kirk, how do you plead? That was a great shot of all of their faces. Because of certain mitigating circumstances, all charges but one are summarily dismissed. Yay, but which one? It is the judgment of this council that you be reduced in rank to captain. Boo, what no, boo. The command of a starship. <laughs> Enterprise. Oh, never mind. This is what they want. This is what he wants. Let's do it. In your debt. It's funny how a demotion is actually a good thing. You're going to your ship. I'm going to mine. Oh, what? She's Science on a ship? Vessel. Oh, good for her. It was most kind of you to make this effort. It was no effort. You are my son. Mm, yay. I have a message for your mother. Yes. Tell her... I feel fine. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. He answered the question. Oh, I want to see the new ship. It has to be the Enterprise. If it's the Enterprise, I'm jumping. I hope it's not one of those ugly ships over there and those you can see on screen. That will be done. It is the Excelsior. It is the Excelsior. Oh no, it's not. It's going to be the Enterprise. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! It's the Enterprise! Oh, let's go! Oh, it's so sexy, it's so clean, it's so beautiful. My friends, we've come home. Oh, yes, we have. 
Yes, we have. We are home. Let's go. I have chills. I have chills from seeing the Enterprise. Oh, it's so awesome. Oh, I've missed this cockpit. Oh, I'm so happy that Enterprise is there. I need to walk around. I have energy now. Oh, let's go. Oh, I'm so happy. The Enterprise is back. And that was my reaction to Star Trek for The Voyage Home, the 1986 sci-fi action, and not really action, I guess, more adventure film starring Leonard, Leonard Nimoy, William Shatner, DeForest Kelly, James Doohan, Nichelle Nichols, and Walter Koenig. Oh, and also Catherine Higgs as Dr. Gillian Taylor, the appearance of the 20th century Earthling in this movie. This movie was an interesting one for me because on one hand, I really enjoyed it. I really liked the fish out of water scenario that they put their cast in and I thought it was a really cool idea, especially if the budget for this movie was a lot less than the other Star Trek movies. A very interesting and cool idea to make the budget work because then you don't have to work on all these space special effects or cool model effects. You know, you can just plop them down in a city and it's a lot cheaper so if it, the budget, if that was one of the reasons, the budget for why this movie takes place in the 20th century, like 1980s, I assume it takes place around the time this movie came out, like 1986. But if that is the reason, then that it's cool. And I thought the time travel idea was really cool and stuff. I They said they've done time travel before. Do they do it in the show? I, I, that would be something that I would like you guys to tell me if you know, or if they never really done it before, but someone just says it. So it's like, oh, they've done it before. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, I did like the fish out of water stuff. I thought it was fun. The story though was so strange. Don't you think? Like imagine trying to pitch this story to executives. You know, you're like, okay, so there's this giant cylinder in space and it's speaking gibberish and it turns out the gibberish is humpback whale sounds. No one knows why. We're not going to explain it by the way. We're not going to explain why it's doing this, why it's destroying the earth because and why it's making humpback whale sounds. We're not going to explain any of that but anyways it's making humpback whale noises and so the crew have to go back in time to get humpback whales and bring them back to earth. The humpback whales are going to sing and the cylinder is going to leave. Like imagine explaining that. I feel like executives would go Huh? <laughs> That's at least when I figured out that this was going to be the plot. I was like, this is just so bizarre. Like, I would never have thought... Star Trek going in the past is cool, and I can totally understand time travel and stuff, even though the J.J. Abrams movies have time travel in them. So I don't care about time travel. I actually love time travel and the concept of time travel, as long as the movie either doesn't try to explain it enough or explains it well enough, because sometimes you can have time travel and it just gets really confusing about the rules. And there's a joke in this movie as well about that, but I think they play it off pretty well. But yeah, it was just the aspect of the whales, the focus of the whales, and that there's not really any kind of antagonist in this movie obviously the cylinder is the thing they're kind of fighting against against trying to get the whales and stuff like that but still it was just kind of a very like methodical movie not in terms of like everything happens just like every other movie methodical but it just kind of like went through the paces you know there were definitely long stretches of the movie where characters were just kind of just kind of walking around I guess and talking and yes they were doing things that were kind of propelling the plot with like Scotty and Bones going to the the glass place and changing the glass around and Kirk talking to Dr. Taylor about his like life I guess and being a space Martian <laughs> whatever you want to call him being from the 23rd century you know things happen in this movie and everything is like propelling towards the plot but it still felt like very slow it reminded me of the slow motion picture this the first Star Trek movie just because of how slow it was and I still found a lot of enjoyment in this movie and it just wasn't what I was expecting and I think I was going into this movie with too high of expectations because some people in the comments of my Star Trek 2 reaction which is the most recent one that is out as of filming this review some people were saying that Star Trek 4 is even better than Star Trek 2 some people were saying it's on par of Star Trek 2 some people were saying it's like their second favorite so a lot of people were giving this one like really high praise and I think that just kind of upped my expectations so much that watching this movie it almost felt like a little bit of a letdown because everyone was like oh yeah there's like a trilogy of Star Trek 2, 3, and 4 and stuff like that it's kind of like this connected trilogy almost and you got like the same kind of things running throughout and stuff and I was really excited I was like oh this is like the fi fi final movie of this unofficial trilogy like 2, 3, and 4 and everyone's saying it's so good like I was so pumped and then when I was watching it I was like it's good 
movie. I just don't think it's as good as I was expecting it to be. I enjoyed myself. I had a lot of fun. There were some really good comedy moments. I kind of like Spock's journey and stuff. I enjoyed them exploring San Francisco in the 20th century in 1986 or whatever, whatever exact time period they were in. It just didn't live up to my expectations, but that's my fault because I put them too high. And before we get into like the rest of the review where I talk about the reviews of this movie and then the score and then like the model work and the camera work, which I thought Leonard Nimoy did actually a, a way better job in this movie than he did in the third Star Trek movie, but I'll get into that. But before I get into that, I just want to say something that I know I'm going to forget by the end of the review. So I'm just going to talk about it now. I kind of wish that the whales were not part of this movie. I got to be honest, they are charming, they are cute, whales are very majestic creatures, they are very beautiful, but I thought this movie was going to be, as soon as this movie started, you know, you get that Klingon ambassador talking about Kirk, like he's talking smack about Kirk and all of this and how he kind of like murdered this crew of Klingons and how Klingons are never going to back down and they need justice and stuff, and I thought the movie was going to take that sort of approach where the Klingons, it was going to be almost like this political action thriller where the Klingons are kind of going against the will of Starfleet because of this one action that Kirk did and the consequences of this one action even though he was trying to save his crew trying to save Spock he still did something which affected a whole bigger group of people than he was expecting you know and I was expecting the movie to go that route and I can't I can honestly say I'm a little disappointed that it didn't because I think that would have been really interesting and they kind of just dropped it like he kind of does his whole speech he gets really angry the Klingon and then all of a sudden the movie just kind of switches to whales and they kind of leave all of that stuff about Klingons and Kirk murdering people and then the Klingons also murdering people. They kind of leave all of that stuff which I thought was really interesting and they just leave it in the dust and they're like, okay, that's over now. Let's talk about the whale ship. Let's talk about the giant cylinder in the sky. So I was really hoping that the movie was gonna go the direction that I thought it was gonna go in the beginning. And I liked the direction it went with the whales. I just kind of wish they had either touched on the stuff that they talked about at the start with the Klingons being really mad about what Kirk did, especially maybe even at the end, they could have come out and been like, no, this is, a, this is an atrocity. Why are you doing this? Why are you giving him his own ship when he did this before or something? They just didn't touch on it again which I just thought was really strange. Okay, so yeah, the reviews of this movie, I'm just gonna talk about really quick because I have some other things to talk about with this film. 7.3 out of 10 on IMDb, which is audience and 82%, which is critics. I think 7.3 for audience is a totally fair score from this movie. I think I like this one a little bit more than Star Trek 3, but I don't think I like this one anywhere near as much as I did the first and the second movie. Those movies, those two, those two movies are still miles ahead for me in terms of just pure enjoyment factor or wow factor. This one was just an Joel Moon movie I could probably just sit on the couch and just kind of turn on and just enjoy but The Wrath of Khan and the first Star Trek the motion picture are movies that I'd like to experience if I watch them again you know because I thought they were so good. Okay so yeah the score of this movie as well I think was the weakest of our four Star Trek scores that we've gotten so far far and it kind of makes sense because the composer that composes this movie that he isn't like the most famous or I guess I've never heard of him before and then you're competing against these two other composers who are like super famous you you know, so it's kind of hard to compete against super famous well-known composers when you're unknown. Obviously, it's doable, and the Star Trek theme song in this was great, even though I, he, it's just a rendition of another song, but I still think the rendition that was in this movie was really good. And then some of the music I did think was really good, the ending music where it was all cheery and I thought the credits were going to end and the whales were flying around and flying around were swimming around. I thought that score was really beautiful as well. The sound design for the actual c cylindrical ship was really awesome. It was very creative creepy and it was very pulsy and just kind of bassy in the back of your headphones and I don't know it kind of creeped me out a little, a little bit but I really liked it. The thing I want to get to and the thing that I saw the most improvement on from the third movie to the fourth movie is the directing and Leonard Nimoy directed this movie just as he did the third one and you can really tell that he improved a little bit or at least enough to tell that he has improved. You know, the camera was a lot more fluid in this movie. It wasn't just kind of staticky and I don't know, the camera in the third movie just didn't really add anything to the movie. But in this one, the camera was a lot more, not integral to the scene, but it was a lot more a part of the scene. You know, the camera was moving like that's for example, Scotty's just walking down the hallway. The camera instead of just standing static or something or having Scotty stand static and the camera be static. Scotty's walking and the camera's doing this nice tracking shot when, you know, maybe the camera didn't need to do that. 
that there's some cool underwater shots where the camera's above water and then it dips down underwater. Some of the shots with the sun when they're going around the sun to do the time thing. I really liked the shots where it's showing the whole crew and you can tell they're getting closer to the sun because the lighting is getting oranger and oranger and oranger and it's just it was just a really cool thing and it saves budget obviously because you don't have to show this CGI sun or this visual effects sun or however they made the sun but it's just a really cool way and creative way to show the cast show how nervous they all are but also tell the audience visually how close they are getting to the sun because the light inside the cabin is getting so much brighter I thought those were some incredible shots as well there are also some other great shots with the ships some of the model effects were great in this movie some of the shots where the ships were like flying into the sun everything on Vulcan looked incredible and looked incredibly orange as well like I just thought in general the camera work in this movie and the directing of this movie was a lot more solid. It felt like Leonard Nimoy had had a film under his belt or maybe a film or two under his belt. Obviously the first movie, that, or I guess the Star Trek 3, his first movie that he directed was his actual first movie that he directed and so there's obviously some amateurism when it comes to directing there because you don't have the same skill set as maybe someone who has directed multiple movies but in this one it felt like he was a little bit more confident in directing trying out some new camera movements some just things that would make sequences a lot more interesting than just over the shoulder shot or just static shots of characters standing there talking to each other or characters moving around but then still having the camera static the camera was just a lot more move I was gonna say movie in this <laughs> but the camera was a lot more movie in this movie it was a lot more just fluid in this movie and it just drifted around the place a lot more and I found it a lot more engaging than the third one. Okay so yeah even though I had complaints about the whale and stuff I still enjoyed this movie and I enjoyed this movie I think more than the third movie so that still says something because I enjoyed the third movie and I think this one edges out the third movie for me by a little bit although they're kind of a little equal to me at the same time, but I think I had a little bit more enjoyment with Star Trek 4 because the Enterprise came back at the end, and I think that's what edges it out because, oh, the Enterprise is back, and that is so good. So anyways, let's get into the cast. That was a really weird transition from Enterprise to the cast, but I guess the Enterprise basically like a character, so maybe the transition makes sense. So I'll just be talking about Leonard Nimoy, William Shatner, and Catherine Hicks. Everyone else in the crew did a really good job. I really like them. They're, I, you, it's what's Star Trek without them, you know, especially with the original cast. They're, they're all great. They all work together really well. But Leonard Nimoy, William Shatner, and Catherine Hicks were kind of the stars of this movie. So they're who I'm going to talk about. Catherine Hicks is Dr. Gillian Taylor. I thought she was fine. She was she was fine in this movie, although I didn't really remember her name for most of the movies. So I, I just I guess that kind of shows that I didn't really care a lot about her character. I don't know if she's going to ever come back. I feel like she won't come back. I feel like it was kind of like a goodbye to her character and then she's just not going to appear in any of the other ones. And you know, that's fine. I'm not really going to miss her. She was fun while she was in the movie. I liked how proactive she was. I liked that she wanted to help. She wanted to go to the 23rd century, which is a good idea because the police definitely would have caught her because, you know, probably security cameras in the hospital. So the police probably would have caught her. Then she probably would have went to prison, probably would have inter been interrogated and probably the American government would think that she's working with the Soviets or the Russians because Chekhov was with them and stuff like that, you know, so everything in the 20th century was going to be really bad for her. So it's probably a good thing she went to the 23rd century and I thought she was good. Her enthusiasm, her enthusiasm for the whales was pretty infectious, I'll be honest, but I just thought that she was a little bit bland and I don't think I cared. I didn't care enough about her to know her name, so I won't mind if she doesn't appear in the later movies. Leonard Nimoy as Spock, I thought he was really good in this movie. I thought that his like transition into becoming Spock again was really cool and I liked that he was super logical at the beginning and then he became more human by the end of the movie. I think the transition was done actually pretty well and it took the whole movie to get to the Spock that we know and love, which is what I was hoping for. I thought, and I, that's what I thought was gonna happen. It was gonna take a while and I'm glad it did. I thought all the scenes he was in was, were a lot more funny in this movie than usually, they usually are because of the century they were in, because they were in the 20th century. They, he was trying to learn the different slang and he was trying to act like William Shatner's Kirk and stuff. And I just thought all the vocab and all like the literal 
literal translations that Spock was seeing with the words or hearing with the words, I thought they were really hilarious. And finally, William Shatner as Admiral James T. Kirk, or I should say now Captain James T. Kirk. It's funny how the demotion is actually a good thing. I said that in my reaction, but it is funny. I was like, yeah, demotion. Well, first I was like, oh, demotion, but then I was like, oh, motion. But I thought he was pretty good in this movie as well. I don't think this was his best performance. I still stand by the second movie being his best performance. However, he was still great in this movie. I love the confidence that he has. I love the swagger that he has as Kirk. And I love that he is also just a very intellectual person. Like Kirk is a very smart guy, but he also has the smoothness and the swagger that Spock doesn't have, obviously because Spock is half Vulcan and, and Kirk is all human, you know? But still, I still enjoyed Kirk in this movie. I thought he was great. And I did like his chemistry with both Spock and Catherine Hicks. So yeah, that is my reaction and review to Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. I'm excited for Star Trek V, although I've heard that that one is the worst one. Everyone that I've seen in the comments has just been like, yeah, Star Trek V is a movie. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it because it's a movie and my expectations are really low for it, which hopefully should help the movie. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.